ideas put forward, people disagreed. But what matters now is what happens now. Will it translate into action? Joining me live now is the Assistant Minister for Women, Amanda Stoker. Amanda Stoker, thanks so much for your time. This event was, uh, in terms of the panel conversations, was really free from politics. We heard from experts on the grounds, uh, vic victim survivors, those within the justice system and the policing system. And I know you were watching on, but what do you say to women who you know, are thankful for those experts, they appreciate the words of the last two days, but now really want to see action. Can that action be delivered? Laura, thank you so much for having me on the program and for your enormous contribution to making the summit what it was in your MC role. You had a really difficult task in sensitively navigating this really um, important issue and you did a great job of it. So thank you for that. I'm sure all women are grateful for the way that you have done so. Women do have a right to expect um, to participate in their community, to live in their home, to be at work in ways that are safe. It's fundamental to the idea of quality of opportunity in this country. Uh, if you're not safe, you can't do any of the other things that are needed to reach your potential as a human being. Hmm. There's, I think though, um, a really fair expectation that there is a product from this and we have a plan to make that happen. The national plan to end violence against women and their children um, is something that has been in development. This summit was part of the consultation phase for putting that together, and it reflects what has been a record funding commitment to the subject of women's safety that we've seen under the Morrison government. Um, what the summit will do, though, I think, um, is make sure that funding in its record sum is applied as wisely as practically and as meaningfully as is possible to shift those tough barriers that have existed mm. to making meaningful change in this area. And I mean, we saw some really good examples in the discussions um, over the last couple of days. We saw Indigenous women explaining the way that um, unless they can get services in their locality, then they are largely without help. And I think that's a, a fair criticism and something that's echoed by uh, women of all ethnicities from rural and regional areas. We heard really useful information about the significance of trauma in men as a driver of um, violence against women. And I think that's um, a matter that's sometimes lost in discussions about this and underinvested in as something that we can do. Mm. We've learned about the things that do and don't work in um, effectively offender rehabilitation programs so that um, people who have a history of um, being a domestic violence abuser or someone who um, is violent to women have pathways that speak to their experience that they are prepared to participate in that aren't sanctimonious but that are effective. Um, and all of those things I think will mean that that record spend is applied more wisely than it has ever been. That's good for taxpayers but most importantly it's good for yeah. um, those vulnerable women whose um, right to live safely is something we must deliver on. You talk about a record spend, but many of these groups that spoke yesterday say there are just not enough money. In, and, you know, after three years, uh, that spending runs out, they have to reapply, so they can't plan uh, long term. Do you accept that? One of the, the examples as well, you probably heard this, Amanda, was that um, when it comes to intervention orders, for example, sometimes they're just not effective because if an intervention order is put on a man, they simply don't have anywhere to go. They're homeless, so they return to the home where they're not meant to. Mm. Look, I think that's right. And there's a connection between the availability of um, safe places for women to go, but also um, affordable places for um, men who are under orders to remove themselves to. Um, all of those things factor into the effectiveness of the on-the-ground yeah. response. And the word we heard cropping up all the time was how complex this problem is. And um, part of the reason it's complex is because um, it's very difficult to legislate for culture. Politics and, and government mm. is downstream from culture. Well, and yet this is a that. cultural well, issue, with issue we're trying to drive. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. And it's really hard to legislate uh, for that. But is it a fair criticism that 
you know, deeds don't match words. When you see the respect um, at, at work uh, legislation, not all of them uh, were implemented in the last sitting week. Now we have a, a six-week break. Grace Tame says that the Prime Minister really... Um, really undercut his own words by appointing a new human rights commissioner in Lorraine Finlay. What do you have to say to that? Look, I don't think it's especially fair. Um, everyone who operates in this space is doing it sincerely, doing it for the right reasons and trying to get the right outcome. If I can take those criticisms in turn, um, Lorraine Finlay is an outstanding top shelf human rights lawyer. She has been fighting trafficking, including of women and children um, in Asia in recent years. She is a highly credible um, human rights and constitutional law academic. And I have no doubt that as a brilliant, capable woman who in all of her career up to this date has been fighting the kind of violence against women that you see in trafficking, um, she will do an amazing job. We shouldn't let um, you know, partisan political positions here undermine what is a great woman doing great things and who will continue to do that in the human rights role. When it comes to respected work, um, it's a little bit easy, I think, to accept the Labor arguments um, on this. We have, without a shadow of a doubt, um, implemented the government's um, commitment to legislate um, everything that we said we would. Well, when will in... that be done? When will that be done? All 55? Well, um, all 55 recommendations isn't a, um, a relevant measure because some of those recommendations were directed to the states mm. and so they weren't relevant to the Fed. Um, some of them were directed at the corporate sector, some of them were directed at the education sector. Um, and so we have backed with funding and with executive action um, everything that's relevant to us federally. Uh, we have implemented in ways that are... Um, we suggest effective, even if they might be a different way of skinning the cat, um, all of the things that uh, we committed to recommend uh, to in, in terms of recommendations. Mm. And um, if there's anything else, uh, we haven't taken it off the table. We are, we are working to get those things done in a way that fits with the COVID response. Sure. So um, there's absolutely no basis for criticising the government's commitment here. If you want to get into um, who's committed to respect at work, I think it's worth asking the states when they're going to step up and implement their responses. That um, is... It's very interesting that you know, none of our Labor colleagues were prepared to put the feet of their state Labor colleagues to the fire on when they're going to step up and do their bit to ensure women's respect at work. But okay. the very first of your points was um, about some of the concerns that were raised about continuity of funding yep. um, and making sure that all of those services are there on the ground. Yeah, um, indeed, and, indeed. And Amanda, I hate to interrupt you because this is such a big topic. I didn't leave enough time for it. Maybe we need a whole show for it. But um, <laughs> we are going to have to leave it there because it is a big issue and we will talk about funding. But thank you so much for coming to talk uh, on the program today about it because it was a summit and I feel like it wasn't just a talk fest. Let's hope it uh, stays that way. Thanks so much. I'm confident of that and um, I know that you and I will have opportunities to um, hold us to account in making sure that's happening. We will and I will. Thanks so much.